Okay, yeah, June 11th, and uh, Arthur Hayes has dropped some new fire, so let's uh, delve into his brain, which he so kindly shares with us plebs <laughs> and non-plebs. Um, yeah, yeah, always uh, interesting to see what he has to say, and uh, so always grateful for his uh, knowledge drops, and uh, let's dig deep into his brain. Uh, okay, let's share screen. Um, bum, bum, bum. If I can share screen. Yes, here we go. And the uh, title of this blog is called First Trap. Uh, let's see why. Share screen. If my computer coordinates, uh, cooperates, here we go. Boom. Okay, Arthur Hayes, first trap, 10th of June, 2021. Uh, Crypto Trader Digest. Uh, <laughs> so he's got the NPC character and he's got some masked up. Uh, <laughs> okay. Um, the majority of my essays in 2021 have focused on the fundamental building blocks of my bullish opinion on the future of crypto. Few words are dedicated to current events unfolding before us in the age when virtue signaling and social media influences reign supreme. Critical thought that deconstructs popular narratives using logic and first principles thinking is hardly profit. Yeah, so true, so true. It's why I prefer to read something a few thousand words in length even if I dis disagree with the author, because the length allows the writer to dig into the gray of an issue. Yeah, that's very true. Uh, sound bites are just that, uh, not worth the words they often said, but it's good to have something in long form and then digested down into something, distilled into something really useful. Um, but uh, let's continue. Few, few things in this world are black and white. Everything is a shade of grey. Six second TikTok videos, on the other hand, can only convey so much information. Maybe I'm just an old curmudgeon who refuses refuses to purse my lips like a duck, uh, duck face <laughs> and create first traps posing in front of material objects I don't own. <laughs> yeah, oh my god. Yeah, Instagram is uh, still uh, one big first trap, isn't it? In this piece, I offer my thoughts on a few topics du jour that are currently floating around the popular media narrative soup. My goal is to provoke thought. Uh, none of my musings are here. Uh, are intended to be read as actionable trade ideas. But if one of these narratives run counter to a belief you have about a particular crypto asset, hopefully reading these words will allow for a moment of of reflection that could culminate in a change in your perspective. Um, good advice. Um, keyboard warriors take control of environmental policy. That's never a good, a good thing, is it? I'm glad I spend more time hitting balls with a racket than following the tweet storm of the day. If there's one topic that fundamentally ir irks me, it is the current ESG narrative, uh, environmental, social, G, what does G stand for? Uh, I forget. I, I, okay. I, that fossil fuels are the devil. <laughs> and that is, uh, and that is economically viable today for us to stop burning fossil fuels altogether. Crazy talk, right? If followed blindly, I believe this fundamental misunderstanding will result in a significant misallocation of capital due to first level shallow. Again, first level shallow thinking, which reigns supreme, right? Um, I'm not denying that, fossil, that burning fossil fuels has a major impact on our environment. Energy rules everything we do in life. We consume it to live and enjoy ourselves. And the ways in which we produce energy has have external externalities. Here's what I know, because I'm good at the internet. <laughs> okay, look at this chart. 
in billions of units. We've got CO2 emissions, global population, and global, G global GDP. 1950, and uh, CO2 emissions are six. I'm not too sure what, uh, is it tons per something? And in 2019, it is 36%. Or thirty six point four four units uh, up five hundred percent. Global population two point five uh, up to seven point seven billion. I'm assuming uh, that's a growth of two hundred percent, roughly a three x, right? Uh, just over a three x. And global GDP nine point two five. Uh, I think that's trillion. And uh, is in twenty nineteen was eighty seven point eight zero and that's an increase of 849 percent almost a 10x right um fact since the 1950s humans have gotten richer and had her uh, had a lot of kids this has pushed up the global population you can, cannot argue with that fact global gdp has also risen is that nominal uh, i think it's just, I think it's beaten nominal. Uh, as the world has gotten richer, it has produced more goods and services, which have ultimately led to humans having an easier and more pleasurable time on this planet. Uh, for much of the past 150 years or so, burning fossil fuels has been, and by and large, still is the most, most efficient cheapest way to produce the amount of energy required to pay for the party on a global scale right fact uh, the externality of intensive consumption consumption of energy to fuel a better lifestyle resulted in greater carbon emissions not necessarily not necessarily a bad thing greater carbon emissions uh co2 is actually uh not a, a evil thing. If you're a, a world government, what actions would you take based on this set of simple facts? Would you tell people to have fewer kids to reduce the strain uh, on our resources and environment, like they do uh, do in China? I think they lifted the one child one family policy, but uh, that's been in place for a few decades, right? Um, Nah, most governments encourage families, most, um, ish, ish, um, in, most governments encourage uh, families to have more kids due to a fall in the working age population. Would you tell people to go back to living on a farm, die from curable diseases and accept a simpler existence devoid of the modern comforts we enjoy? I doubt it. We've become, we've become accustomed to a certain standard of living and we're taught that growth is limitless and life is a series of amazing purchases that only result in more <laughs> happiness. <laughs> uh, yeah, chase that dream, people. Would you tell the world to stop burning fossil fuels and replace it with wind and solar farms? Absolutely. fucking -lutely. It's the easiest way to get the general population on board without having to directly ask them to sacrifice their own lifestyle. As an avid skier, I love crisp, clean air and a clean mountainside with a healthy portion of deep, fluffy powder. Ah, oh, man, I wish I could ski. I think I'm too big. <laughs> big old dude I am. Um... The problem with this approach and the virtue signalers, signalers in charge of our mainstream narratives is that it ignores the fact that, are more, that, that there are more people on this planet than ever before who would like to have an a, enjoyable existence, necessitating the consumption of more and more energy at an affordable price. And because we haven't figured out how to produce renew renewable energy affordably at a global scale with our current infrastructure, keeping energy costs low for the masses to keep the party going likely still requires fossil fuels. But I'm just a lowly keyboard warrior and the market has spoken. <clears throat> fossil fuels equals bad. Wind, solar, and other renewable energies equals good. Uh, yeah, no black and grey allowed, right? Uh, 
I mean, no grey allowed, just black and white. I recently started reading Doombert. It's a pithy blog on current events delivered via email each day. Oh, interesting. This week, Doombert featured an article about energy costs. It makes an interesting point that Larry Fink is now the world's energy star. Really? Uh, Fink controls BlackRock. Wow, interesting, interesting. Which is which via the trillions of dollars of ETFs, uh, mutual funds, it administers, is the most powerful investment body globally. And Fink is all about ESG, uh, which means providing incremental investment into the, the traditional oil and gas sector is forbidden. Uh, building and maintaining energy extraction infrastructure is extremely capital intensive. Yep. Uh, without the public markets or direct support from governments, it is very hard to finance these companies. Uh, the payback time is too long and the sums too large for private companies to build and maintain projects. As a result, heads of large pools of capital like Fink have outsourced influence on the strategic direction of corporations and global energy policy as a whole. This is very dangerous. People and organizations like Fink and BlackRock, BlackRock rule starve the fossil fuel sector of resources and direct them to companies pursuing renewable projects. Um, the question will, yeah, so we need some really good new groundbreaking technology to enter the market, they, which they may already have lined up. I'm not ruling that out. And the question, will, a question we will only know the answer two years from now is whether that empirically allows the world to produce the energy it needs at a all-in acceptable cost. Okay. China bans Bitcoin again. A few weeks ago, it was reported that that last large Chinese miners would face power cuts. Beijing is serious about its commitment to reducing carbon emissions. It makes sense. As people have gotten richer due to industrialization, the negative environmental, environmental externalities produced have not been acceptable to a newly affluent class of comrades. <laughs> Bitcoin miners in China use a lot of cheap coal power and that just has to stop. I visited, a, I visited a friend of mine who perched in the perfectly manicured jungle of Bukit Timah, uh, must be in Thailand somewhere, or uh, Bali, something like that. Um, it runs a Bitcoin mining farm using 100% renewable energy. Oh, in Norway. Um, How's the jungle in Norway? Uh, okay, maybe he's uh, doing it remotely. The highlight of the visit wasn't the information I gleaned, but that I ate my first <laughs> Alfonso mango from India. Ooh, Alfonso mango. Uh, they are world-renowned for their sweetness and intense flavor. It's hard to eat them outside of India because they spoil quickly. Thanks, dude. Um, bum, 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 bum. Back to Bitcoin. Asked, I asked him if, if if the exodus of miners from China was real. This is a question on my mind too. The community is always on edge, edge that China will tire of supporting the mining, mining industry and a significant amount of hash power will all go poof. He recounted a story where a few years ago a mining outfit approached him for hosting at his facility. He quoted a price. The miner said it was five times more expensive than China. And that was the end of the conversation. This same miner, this same miner came back recently pleading for hosting, badgering my friend for terms and offering to accept essentially whatever price is asked. Well, new and old mining rigs are hitting the market via a network of brokers. You can buy thousands of machines if you know the right people. Either a miner sells the rigs for something or for, finds hosting internationally, staying in China is not an option. Wow, wow, wow. This is major, major news uh, or facts, if they are really facts. 
The ESG narrative is front and center because the most desirable locations for mining Bitcoin are those that appear to be ESG compliant. That stamp of approval allows institutional money to check their box and invest. Mining is extremely capital intensive. As the crypto eco ecosystem matures, the cost to stay competitive are only going up. Up only, baby. Uh, institutional capital is required to keep up with the Satoshi's hold that fort. Bitcoin equals ESG battery. In a world where the only green green lit projects are renewable and only mining outfits powered by renewable sources are investable, Bitcoin mines must be in proximity to said power sources. This is powerful because the biggest problem with renewable energy is it usually isn't harf harvested near population centers. Yeah. The cost of wind and solar is directly proportional to the efficiency of batteries. Battery technology is improving exponentially with the influx, influx of attention and investor uh, capital. However, current and proposed battery technology, technologies require certain commodities that only a few countries possess in quantities, quantities large enough to power the ESG revolution. Unfortunately for capital, these countries are not the major global economies. Yeah, I think uh, Western Africa. Uh, the ESG revolution is yet another way to externalize the lifestyle habits of the de developed world to developing countries who possess essential natural resources. The result is another small cadre of individual families who now get to gallivant around Knightsbridge. How interesting. This article and uh, carbonbrief.org explain that these six metals are key to a low carbon future. You can click the link. It is three years old, but it gives a good overview of the essential metals needed needed to power our bright future. Let me be a bit uh, acerbic. Uh, our narrative gods <laughs> convince us that our renewable carbon-free energy future is dependent on pulling a massive amount of stuff from the earth, which requires energy, carbon-based energy, right? Or human uh, manpower, which is even worse, right? Slave power. Instead of piping hydrocarbons out of the ground, we will strip mine a bunch of industrial commodities. Progress. Boom. The notion that Bitcoin is the world's best battery is not a new idea. The cost of storage and transport of energy from where it's produced to where it's consumed is non-negligible. Bitcoin is the first true currency that is backed by electricity. The network functions via internet-connected miners who consume electricity, i.e. energy, to perform computational work. It then stores energy in an abstracted form, Bitcoin, which is the token. So you can actually uh, use the capital B for the network and uh, lowercase b for the token. That's one way of doing it. Um, to clear things up. Um, so Bitcoin lower case is the token is easily transferable. Uh, an end-to-end -end Bitcoin energy economy would obviate the need for massive build, or build out of close proximity renewable energy storage. Walk with me. Uh, number one. A wind farm is located in a windy part of Bumblefuck. The capital for it was raised by issuing a renewable Bitcoin denominated bond to ESG warriors who want to support renewable energy infrastructure. Uh, the farm is attached to a mining rig and earns Bitcoin depending on the amount of hash power it represents. The farm pays a coupon back to the bondholder in the form of Bitcoin. 
It has source from operations. Mm, this is getting interesting. The coupon is variable, the variable rate. And is a total sum of all Bitcoin uh, earnings minus expenses for running the wind farm. Back in the city, on-demand energy is still produced using dirty fossil fuels. But it's made exorbitantly expensive in an attempt to represent its total environmental impact. So this is all the carbon tax This is being foisted and hoisted upon us, right? Uh, try driving a V8 in good old jolly England. You get hammered with carbon taxes. Um, the charging station is connected to the local grid and purchases power on the spot market depending on the BTC kilowatt hour pricing. Uh, do you understand what's happening? The charging station in the city connected to the local, local grid and purchases power on the spot market spot market depending on the BTC kilowatt hour pricing so that which is variable uh, which is a kind of a function of the ha hash rate right um, passing that pricing on which a small markup to the consumer this hypothetical energy ecosystem is more realistic uh, the on-demand close to the customer energy is produced using fossil fuels at a much higher price Savvy consumers who can defray high energy costs by producing energy where it's windy or sunny use that energy to mine Bitcoin and then spend the earnings to power their lifestyle. Yeah, interesting, interesting. That makes sense in my head. Is Michael Saylor irresponsible or a goddamn genius? The answer to that question usually depends on the price of Bitcoin, right? If a Bitcoin price goes down, people think he's an idiot. If it goes up, he's a genius. That is because Saylor, CEO of MicroStrategy, has transformed his company into a pseudo Bitcoin ETF. Um, he had the goal in 2020 to issue $1.6 billion worth of bonds and use the proceeds to purchase Bitcoin. Oh my fucking god! Oh man, this is kind of uh, going to my uh, little blog article yesterday. Ooh, yeah, B's got a different uh, chart. Blows a chart of the current distribution of MSTR's debt by year of maturity. Uh, total debt one point seven billion. Two issues. Yeah, that's the coupon seventy five point seven five percent. Average maturity. 2026, uh, 2026, yeah, he's got one in 2028, one in 2025, I believe. And a 0.75% coupon convertible bond comes due on the 9th of December 2025. Um, the zero coupon bond comes due on 17th February 2027. If micro strategy, micro strategy doesn't have the cash flow to pay back the principal or cannot access the corporate bond market then and only then would micro strategy be forced to sell assets as these mature and he's made all the coupon payments uh, on time you could just roll out another bond right that's what kind of like treasuries do the treasury department right they just keep rolling out new paper right the relevant question is at what yield would it be uneconomical to refinance the bond so this is where um, Arthur's brain is way beyond my my, my scope. Um, that is fundamentally driven by the performance of Bitcoin versus the growth in the US money supply. As we know, that is dictated by the Federal Reserve. Using the historical returns of the past five years displayed below, the refinancing rate for a five-year bond will need to be greater than <laughs> 5,800 and eight <laughs> percent this is because of the performance of bitcoin right uh versus u.s money supply five years or 1162 percent per annum at that rate the company is effectively shut out of the corporate bond market this is btc 2017 top 2019 mid top uh, 2020 COVID crash 
And this is 2021, 65K, right? Um, yeah, yeah. I'm just seeing if he did anything else to the chart. Uh, okay. okay. Given that MicroStrategy has a viable cash generating business, yeah, it's on course for $50 million. I find that situation highly unlikely. That is because many in do because many institutional bond invest, investors lack common sense. They follow a set of investment fund mandates blindly. Uh, repeat, they follow a set of investment mandates blindly. They don't do much thinking in Wall Street. Lazy bastards. Therefore, even if they hate and known that it's not just laziness, they don't want to stand out. They don't want to be the odd one out, right? Because uh, that risks the entire career if they screw up or fuck up. Uh, so rather just lose money together than be that sole person losing money on a bad idea, right? Therefore, even if they hate Bitcoin to its core, if MicroStrategy corporate paper has an attractive yield versus their benchmark, they will buy the issue up to their concentration limits. MicroStrategy is a listed order to the company of a certain size, so its issues must be owned regardless of what the CEO does with the proceeds. Boom, boom, boom. That is the reflexive power of passive index investing. Yep, it's quite smart to use the sloth, <laughs> laziness, of the professional investing community to invest in the concept that aims to disimmediate them. Boom, boom, boom. Uh, with the uppercut, Michael S Saylor. Don't worry. If CEO Saylor is your Ishmael, uh, he will continue leading your portfo portfolio through the rough seas and will not desert you. Boom. Uh, I was dealing with this FUD issue yesterday, uh, and basically I found a Twitter thread that discussed all this. It was genius. Um, bonus chart. This is the relative performance of each of MicroStrategy's outstanding bonds, its stock price, and the price of Bitcoin. Surprise, surprise. Bitcoin outperformed all of them. Uh, it's so small, I can't read it, but I'm assuming... Uh... Pink is the Bitcoin? Uh, I'm not too sure. Yeah, the green is micro strategy, US equity. Uh, and the yellow, I think, is the coupon on the bond. Yes, yeah, that's right. Stock, bonds, Bitcoin, right? On Bitcoin on top. CEO Sale is not stopping the party. He will continue gorging on cheap corporate debt as long as institutional investors invest. MicroStrategy reached, recently priced another 500 million, 6.125% coupon bond maturing in June 2028 with a yield, according uh, YAS. I guess that's the code you put into Bloomberg, uh, of 5.71%. Hey, TikTok. What's greater, 5.71% or 1100%? Uh, percent. I think you can answer that in under six seconds. <laughs> okay. Bravo, El Salvador. It's too soon to use this event as the beginning of, of the end of blind allegiance to a global payment system that strips percentage points off a developing country's GDP. Yeah, if you have to borrow like USD, it's tough. Tough on you guys in the smaller countries. If you didn't hear, the president introduced the build up. It just passed making Bitcoin legal tender. He hopes that remitters can use the Bitcoin rails rather than the traditional pipes due to the high cost. It is not a fait accompli that remitting Bitcoin in small amounts is cheaper than the incumbent solution. Boom. Even Bitcoin's fees, what are they? 15, 20, 30 bucks? Way cheaper than uh, traditional uh, solutions, right? Uh, network of like swift payments i'm assuming uh okay the truly revolutionary outcome will be for El, El salvador salvadorian domestic labor to request wages in bitcoin yeah i was reading part of this article last night and this really stuck out for me um so domestic labor to request wages in bitcoin then they would not bear the exchange costs between USD to BTC. Boom, boom, boom. Now you're on a Bitcoin economy. 
There are many developing countries that only contribute their cheap domestic labor to the world market. Yeah, so true, so true, so true. The former U.S. president might refer to these locations as shithole countries. Uh, yeah, <sighs> unfortunately, you kind of get stuck in this third world labor uh, market, and it's hard to escape. Uh, shocking. We need to bring these countries up to a you know general standard of living for humans on this planet. Planet, right? In Asia, women from the Philippines, Indonesia, Myanmar, and other poor Asian countries clean our toilets, cook our food, and take care of our children. What if they decided they would only work for Bitcoin? Would you, as an employer, argue with them, or would you find a way to pay them in Bitcoin? It's an interesting thought uh, experiment. We often believe that the cheap domestic laborers who make our existence pleasant, have no power. But faced with doing the things we would rather not, or acquiring some Bitcoin, I know I would make a beeline for the nearest BTC ATM. Good on him. Um, look at the calendar. The FOMO was real while watching the 2021 Miami Bitcoin conference Bacchanal. Should I go to my tailor and get a white suit like Max Kaiser? <laughs> uh, I think he's got the same freaking white suit for like last decade. Uh, across the Atlantic, he must have a good dry cleaner. Across the Atlantic, the Europeans are not accepting a summer, apart from us in the UK, we're trapped. Uh, a summer without visiting their favorite Mediterranean hotspots. I'm sure Scopios is going to be lit this summer. Outside of the US and EU, most countries are and will continue to be in various forms of lockdown. Currently, the marginal Fiat One Palm is going in and out, which is uh, One Palm is uh, a shell currency used by the Native Americans of Northern America. Going in and out of the crypto originates in the US and the EU. Uh, the plebs woke up and discovered inflation is actually real and it's time to do something about it. But the summer is here. I need a holiday. <laughs> Anytime I want to place a trade, I look at the calendar, sell in May, go away. It's just that simple. The Northern Hemisphere, let's have, have, a, have a quick look at the Dow. I've got the Dow chart here. Um... I'll go back to trading view afterwards. But um, yeah, the momentum is definitely weakening on the Dow. Um, yeah, anytime I want to place a trade, I look at the calendar, sell and may go away. It's just that simple. The Northern Hemisphere will be on the beach, sans mask, enjoying life. And some will sp be spending their dog money, Dogecoin. On earthly pleasures, woof, woof. Either way, they will not be sitting in front of a screen pushing buttons. Uh, yeah, don't trade people. Uh, I write something to this effect every year. The drop in volatility never disappoints, and the summer doldrum effect will even will be even more pronounced as certain people rediscover what real human connection is outside one quarantine's bubble. Um, don't worry, there will be enough unappreciated summer macroeconomic fodder to be re-evaluated in the fall. Over the, uh, until then, over and out, peace. Enjoy your summer, Arthur. Uh, yeah, might plan to do something similar. I'll be stuck in the UK today. Well, it's no biggie. There's plenty of things to explore here in the UK, which I have not yet done in my life. So uh, I will be enjoying them. Yes, yes. Um, okay, let's stop this blog. as a great article. Uh, great article by Arthur, like always. And shall we take a quick look at the Dow? Yeah, just quickly. Share screen, current tab. Okay. So, selling May and go away. Is it real? 
Uh, as you can see, the Dow Jones is uh, could just come back to test this 18 week average around here. Uh, or could come back and test this top over here. There is some talk of uh, reverse repo action going on where banks are depositing their dollars at the Fed. Maybe they are going on holiday. Maybe they are fearing something. But I believe it was like half a trillion dollars that got deposited at the Fed. So they're not buying assets anymore, are they? They're not uh, maybe looking around at the environment and like, it's too pricey. Right, not enough value. Momentum starting to weaken, so maybe it takes a retest of this zero line. It doesn't need to be a bear market like this, but a, a summer off could be well needed and deserved because they've been storming this market higher, right? Um, so what happened last May? Last May was up, up, up. 2019 May. Yeah, a little bit down. Popped in June, July. So actually, selling may go away. Maybe not always works, but uh, depending on how what your profit level is for the year. Let's see here. May, May, May. Yeah, a little summer doldrum. Returning in August, September for this pump. Uh, 2017 May. Nope, didn't work there. 2016 May. Basically, a flat line, right? A little bit of a dip at the end in July 2015. This one definitely worked out. Look at this one 18,000, 15,000, right? Uh, 2014 May. Didn't work out then. And just kind of trading flat, right? Going sideways for the four day returned in September and pushed it up, pushed it down, then pushed it up. So, yeah, kind of a general, general rule to enjoy your life, right? Enjoy your summer as much as you can, right? I aim to because uh, I've been in crypto for full time for a long time. So, yeah. And it's been what two years since my last holiday. Ooh. Oh, yeah, I'm due. I'm overdue. Okay, guys, um, I'm going to end this broadcast right here. Peace, Balaji.